Hello and welcome to our 6 in 6 podcast and video series for our final team, the Central Wildcats. I'm Ben Kaysen, joined by Jacob Sandoval. Yes, sir. And we're here to talk some Wildcat football. Yeah, and let's start off with talking about last year's season, 2-8. and eight. Not a great season. No, not a, not a great season, but there was a lot of stuff going the right way late in the year, especially. So right now, both of their wins were in the final four games as they beat Glenwood Springs and Sierra last season. Those are their two wins. And, of course, they were only uh, about this far away from winning uh, the Bell game with that Nico Martin reach for the end zone. A very close game, and Nico Martin had that fumble, which is just That's tough. Okay. I mean, it's just tough. It's football. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing, though. He has another chance. <laughs> yeah, another chance to redeem himself, and I definitely think he's going to um, provide results. I feel like they wouldn't have been there in that game if he wasn't on the team, though. That's yeah. one thing, because he was killing it that game. You're right. As he did all season, he's one of the big players to look at. So some of the key losses last year, aside from that Centennial game, they lost to County 28-21 in a really well, uh, a well-fought battle. Also, they lost to East and Durango. Big losses, just not even close. Um, those are some of the teams that's in their conference this year, and... They're, they stay in the SCL. They were in the SCL last year, but now they have Centennial and South come on down. So now it's a very Pueblo-centric league. Yeah, and so they're going to have to find a way to get out of this losing streak that they're, streak that they're in now. They're, let's look at their key wins that they had. We're looking at Glenwood Springs 27-17 and Sierra 28-19. And those are their two games that they won. But they won them by a decent margin, and it was a good game. Exactly, yeah. Both of those are what we call confidence-building games. This team is young. They were very young last year. They're still pretty young. But those kind of games late in the year can really transfer over. And the number one guy is Nico Martin. Yeah, and let's talk about Nico Martin. He had 853 yards last year yeah. and 10 touchdowns. And that's what happens when you got a playmaker on your team. He makes plays, and he's really, really one of those aggressive running backs who just gets the ball and just takes off. Yeah, Nico Martin has a lot of speed, and you see that in basketball. You see it uh, with him on the football field especially because uh, on a team that really didn't block very well last year, uh, that struggled, he still shined. And that's going to be something that's going to be really important for him this year to keep going because a lot of eyes are going to be on him. Yeah, I'm going to be surprised this year if he doesn't make it past the 1,000 mark in um, rushing yards. He's definitely going to get to that point, be one of those um, main focal point players on this team. Absolutely. Now let's look at the quarterback situation. So we were talking to Coach, and it sounds like Marcus Duran will stay as the starting quarterback. But last year, we saw them kind of rotate the starter between Duran, who's more run-oriented, and Riley Roth, who last year as a freshman kind of came in and showed off a very nice arm. So... Whichever one of them uh, establishes more playing time, I expect them to give them both some time. Uh, the key will be, can they get that pass offense to be a more consistent distraction from Nico Martin? Yeah, and I think they will because one of the other things, last year Coach Cotterman got hired a week before they had to start playing games. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that kind of period where you just have to get thrown in there and kind of see who's the guys that should be playing and who's the guys that should be learning, um, it's hard to make those decisions in just a week. So they've had the whole summer and now the preseason, and now they just got to um, show us what they've learned from um, the past experiences. Absolutely. I mean, this team, they want to show that development. So a couple other guys I want to look at are Aris Drew and Brandon Martin. Both of them last year stepped up as key role players uh, at running back and receiver, respectively. So this year, they are going to have to step up even more, I think, to take more pressure off of uh, guys like Duran and Martin uh, by making plays themselves. Right, and this is one of those teams where uh, Martin's for sure the playmaker, but you can't just have one playmaker on the team. you got to have multiple weapons that the quarterback can use, especially since you have a young quarterback who doesn't quite know how this system runs yet. We saw him last year. It, it was just a lot of touchdowns and a lot of gives to Nico Martin. They're looking for Nico Martin majority of the time, but they want to find these other weapons that can also be utilized. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be an offense that wants to go from being one-dimensional to two-dimensional, uh, maybe even more than that. I mean, 
Uh, that's Definitely. the key to a good offense like that. So we had a chance to interview Coach Cotterman and Nico Martin, so uh, go ahead and enjoy that. I'm Jacob Sandoval with Rev89, and I'm here with Coach Cotterman of the Wildcat Central Wildcats. Yeah. How are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? Pretty great. Yeah. Um, so we just want to ask you a couple questions about the team and how they're doing. So first off, how did summer go with all the practicing and then off season? How's that been going? So? Ah, it went great. You know, we, we had a good summer. Uh, went to the, went to a camp. Guys got after it, so we're excited. Excellent. And during that, have you guys really changed anything? Are you trying to do more field work, more weight room work, or? Sure. Ah, uh, you know we did a lot of mostly uh, weight room work this summer, and then right now we're on the field getting ready for everything else. Excellent. Yeah. And um, last year you kind of struggled. It was your first year being the head coach here. Um, what are the changes that have been made to um, better prepare this team for this league now? Well, I'd say one, I, I got more time. I got hired two weeks before two days last year. So, uh, you know, that's the biggest difference, just time. And we're a little bit more organized. We kind of know what we got now. So that's, that's been the biggest key factor is time. Yeah. Yeah, and last year you had a really big roster. This year you have a big roster. Um, but a lot of those returning were juniors and now seniors. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know uh, which one of those seniors are going to be really productive on this team this year. Well, let's go for all of them, man. They, yes, they've all sir. been working hard, and I, I, bet you, I bet you they all have really good years. Yeah. And three of them, I, two of them I want to talk about is Nico Mark and Martin and Aristru. Yeah. All right. Um, I just wanted to know what kind of production are we going to see out of them? Um, last year, they were two of your top guys when it came to rushing. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to see from them this year? Uh, Nico had about 1,700 yards all purpose last year, and uh, I bet he does big things this year. And Aris is probably the hardest worker we have on the team, and I, I bet he goes for 1,000 too. I mean, they look to be two of the better guys in the state. And you are you going to have that same return, returning quarterback this year as yeah, well? Yeah, we, we got uh, actually all our skill position guys are back. Oh, excellent. So we got everybody there and most alignment. The linemen. So I think we have eight or nine starters from last year on offense, about the same on defense. Uh, but one of the couple players you're missing, you're missing two, key, uh, two top tacklers last year. You're missing from your defense this year. Um, who's going to fill that position there of the, being the top tacklers? Yeah, I mean, we've got a – couple guys that can get it done linebackers you know we really try to preach just play defense hustle and give great effort so hopefully all 11 can be on the ball and get it done for us yes sir and final question what is your goal um, and overall um, what's your um, what are you going to do moving forward for this program and this year right I mean our, our goal is uh, to get better every day and that's what we're out here doing right now and then you know our immediate goal is to beat Falcon High School on uh, August 31st, and after that, we'll we'll just go one game at a time and see how it works out. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for the All interview. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. I'm here with Nico Martin of the Central Wildcats. How are you doing today, Nico? Good. How are you? How Pat? How has practice been so far? Uh, it's been pretty tough lately, actually. A lot of running conditioning. Yes, sir. And what are you looking forward to this season? Um, I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping to get more wins this year, actually. I think we could do it. Yeah, and you're coming in as a senior this year. Uh, a lot of expectations from you. Uh, I know this team has kind of struggled in the past, um, but what things are you doing to prepare for the future and this season? Uh, we put in a new offense this year. It was kind of tough last year just having Cotterman come in late. So this year we've been working all summer, actually, just on this new offense. So I think that should help us a lot, too, this year. Yeah, and do you think we're going to see you run the ball a lot this year as well? Um, I don't. It's kind of hard to tell. We have a we have a lot of different like uh, plays, but I think I'll be running a lot. Thank you for the interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. So again, thank you to Coach Cotterman and Nico Martin for interviewing with us. They did a great job. We really appreciated their time. Um, so I really got a lot of optimism from their uh, interviews, especially Coach Cotterman's got me a lot more excited about what this team can do this year. Yeah, like Coach Cotterman was saying, he's hoping everybody will come back and everybody will be uh, matured and just play a great game of football. And you know what? I believe him. I believe these kids have matured. They have put in the work. Now that they have a secure coach and he's not going to 
leave anytime soon, that they're going to be a really well-rounded team. I'd like to also mention, I mean, at the practice, those guys are practicing hard. I mean, they, I, I was impressed. Uh, one of the harder, harder looking practices team that we went to, we went to all six schools. They were one of the top in terms of intensity every play in practice. So that was something that I loved to see. So let's look at some of the players that they lost from last year. And really it starts with Vincent Vasquez, who had 125 tackles last season. That led the SCL and really led all the Pueblo teams. He was just unstoppable right there. Yeah, and that's the thing about um, their defense now is where they're gonna where are they gonna find that production? Like 125 tackles is not normal. It's a really big number. And let's talk about um, Darren Wistoff, who actually had 81 tackles, another big number. Great job. And you have two players who made a lot of defensive plays just gone now. Where, where are you going to pick up the slack there? Is it going to be a whole team effort thing, or are we going to have to see a rising star from their defense now um, pick up the slack? Both of those guys were excellent run stoppers. I mean, they did a great job there. And so this year, that's something they're going to have to replace. I mean, you look at even in the Bell game, they have Buddy Nikolai running the ball against them. They're going to have to have those guys who are going to stick a hand in there, make that big tackle. So that's something that's really important. So. Another guy they lost, Anthony Cordova. He was a pretty big part of their run game last year. So he moves on as a senior. Uh, they're going to try and replace his production this year. Yeah, and like we were saying, it's going to have to be from um, uh, Nico Martin, who has been uh, a force on their team and needs to continue to be that force and be the playmaker. Absolutely. So what are some questions you have for this team this season? So it's going to have to be whether or not Marcus Duran can make a good offensive passing game. Absolutely. And it's going to be hard because uh, it's a new system. Last year's system didn't work, or they didn't know it that well. So it's this new system that hopefully he has a good grasp on, and they're going to see what he can do with it. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest keys this year for them is going to be getting Nico Martin the ball in space. That's something that a lot of teams you have to be able to do creatively. I mean, whenever you have one big playmaker, how do they get him in that one-on-one -on -one play? If with it's a bubble screen, straight up screen, uh, counter plays, pitches, tosses, or running right up the gut, they gotta be creative with where they give Nico Martin the ball. Yeah, and that's something that also has to come from Coach Cotterman. Absolutely. What kind of creative plays he's gonna make for Nico Martin, and I think the screen is going to be there. Um, have a couple guards pull, um, protect that outside, and that screen will open up really nice. And so this defense also struggled against the pass a lot last year at times. So an important key for them this year is how do they avoid getting torched by those superior passing offenses like South and East? Those are guys, those are teams rather that really are built on the pass. So can Central be a nuisance there? Uh, maybe get some interceptions. We saw last year they had a lot of picks, but that's because this is one uh, daring defense last season. They took a lot of risks, a lot of 50-50 balls that they'd make aggressive moves for. And oftentimes they'd get interceptions, but also they'd just get burned like they did against South. So it's just something that you got to look at. Mm -hmm. And now let's look at their schedule. And I believe it's probably one of the easiest schedules in the South Central League right now. I mean, it looks that way. You've got facing teams like Falcon, Mitchell, Sierra, and Sand Creek in their out-of-league play. None of those teams had more than two wins last season, so very winnable games to get momentum rolling going into SCL play. And then, of course, you look at teams like County, Centennial, East, South, and Durango. That's their league playing there. It's going to be cool to watch. Can this team take advantage of an uh, easy on paper, it's never really that easy, a schedule to get some momentum rolling? Yeah, you're totally right. It's easy on paper. It looks easy, but, you know, um, Falcon has some... Uh, underclassmen who have developed over the summer and who are going to come back. And Falcon, as you were saying, has always been a pretty good team. Yeah, Falcon's got a good, a good reputation. And really, you look at them, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And really, I think the first game we can really see where Central has developed is their game against Harrison. Last year, they played uh, games against tough teams like Harrison. And it really showed that they were not on the same class as those kind of teams. So... We can see if they can at least hang on and make that game competitive. That'll be a really good sign going into that second half of the season in league play. 
So the big game, though, is the Bell game against Centennial. So what are some of your keys to winning that Bell game for the Wildcats? Uh, for the Wildcats, they just got to look out because I think Centennial is just coming at them with the uh, fire, and Central needs to bring that vengeance and um, get that Bell game title back if they want it back because I know Centennial, they're going to come and get it. And previously I had said um, in the last episode that Centennial was going to take it because they want to hang on to that t title. And it's always easier to hang on to a title to, than to get it ripped, trying to rip it away. Absolutely. Uh, Centennial, they've had control of the Bell game for a good while. Uh, I think three years ago Central had it, but really the Bell has rung red for really the last five, ten years pretty consistently. So that's something that Coach Carterman and the Wildcats want to want to change up. So. One of the big keys for winning that game is going to be getting pressure up the middle against Devin Blue with their defensive tackles. That's something that's going to force uncomfortableness in the pocket, uh, and it's going to stop the run. And what that does, it makes Devin Blue have to make throws on the run, throws under pressure, and do something that Central did really well last year, which is force turnovers. And that's something that the defense needs to do. See, there's nothing, there's nothing that kills a team like turnovers. Mm -hmm. Because once turnovers start, especially at the Bell game, yeah, once turnovers start happening, it'll, it they start flowing like uh, water. So it's going to be a tough game. If they can pull it off, I'll be impressed. But Centennial looks like they are ready for them. And my final key for them to win is get the ball to Nico Martin in space, like we're talking about. Give him 25 touches. I mean, why not? He makes plays, and you better believe he's going to be hungry for that ball game. So. Uh, let's go ahead and, like you already said, let's make your pick. So you've probably got Centennial, and I'm going to tell you why Central's going to win. I feel like they're going to get the ball to Nico Martin, and I feel like he's going to run with a fury in that game. I feel like him and Marcus Duran are going to come out and make some plays. I think that Centennial, after last season only scoring six points, I say you can book it. They score more than 25 this Bell game. Oh, wow. I think that it's going to be flowing. I feel like this team has made some strides on offense, and... Like I said, I was impressed with what I saw. It's going to be a great Bell game, yeah, like they, you said. But they're going to have to watch out for that Centennial defense. Yeah. Because there's a lot of young guys who um, are coming up as seniors and juniors um, on that defense now um, looking to um, hit people yeah. for sure. And now yeah. what's your prediction for their um, standings in the South Central League? Out of six teams, I've got – Central, in terms of just SCL record, which is just those five games, I've got them number four out of six. I think that they are better than County and Centennial this season. But I also feel like they are going to sweep up three out-of-conference wins. So I think they finished five and five, a nice step up from the last couple years. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to put them in number six. Mm -hmm. Just because I think Centennial and County really have improved, really had um, kind of a great foundation. I don't think Cotterman is quite there yet because he's only had a summer. These other teams had coaches who've had years. Jeff Wilson's got a really nice program yeah. building in County. you got to get the credit. Yeah, there. years of um, sitting there with the student, same kids um, after year after year. And so I think um, Central is going to have a tough time. They're going to end up six. Yeah, we'll see what happens, though. That's why they play the games. It's a lot of optimism. I'm excited to see what they can do. Uh, honestly, I feel like SCL football, Pueblo football, is best when Centennial and Central are rolling. And I get South's run was awesome last year. It's great when East is in championships. But, I mean, a Centennial and Central, the bell game, a division play, uh, whenever it's two teams that are really on their way to contending, is so good for the city and so good for the game of football in Pueblo. So I'm hoping those teams can return to that in the next year or two. Yes, sir, and it'll be exciting to see. So we thank you for joining us for the 6 and 6 podcast and video series. So we released all six teams. Be sure to go check out all the teams. Uh, right now, both of us picked East to win the SEL, but that's why they play the games like I keep saying. You never know what is going to happen in high school football. Crazy stuff happens. You're right, Ben. So for Ben Case and Jacob Sandoval, all the people who helped us out, along with uh, the Central Wildcats Athletic Department, Chris Cotterman, Nico Martin for taking the time uh, to interview with us. I really appreciated that. Um, so we thank you for joining us, and be sure to check out the Rev89 page, see if we produce more stuff, as we are going to do. Uh, keep following Rev Sports, and tune in for that bell game.